So you may not get rich off stacking gold and silver, but Buy your gold and silver online from SD Bullion. New customers get gold or silver at spot by visiting sdbullion.com slash new. Okay, here we are at the world famous Harry's Coin Shop in Beaverton, Oregon. You can kind of tell it's Oregon, <laughs> overcast. Uh, we're gonna have a chat with Harry and see what's going on right now with gold and silver. Are people buying it? What are they doing? Let's find out. We've had some people with some big orders of 90%. Really? Yeah, the, the fear of needing it for barter, you know, the smaller recognizable increments, dimes, quarters, etc. And I think that's what's driven the constitutional. Yeah, you guys have a, a nice selection of uh, constitutional silver here. You got some mercury dimes. A lot of great stuff. Yeah, people need to buy uh, junk silver. This is definitely a great place to come. What's your pricing on uh, junk right now? Uh, we're selling it at 20 times the face value. Okay. I think it's very competitive if you compare. Yeah, so that's only like a $5 premium, really. Yeah, it's it's very similar premium to what the, the bullion pieces are going for. Okay, so uh, if people are coming in to buy silver, um, you mentioned they're buying a lot of the constitutional, but what about like rounds, coins, bars? What are they, what are they into for yeah, that? We've been selling a lot of 10 ounce bars and a lot of the, uh, what we call generic rounds, the non-governmental rounds, because people are looking for the, the most weight for the least amount of premium. Right, right, right. So people aren't really going for the Eagles these days. Not, not really <laughs> as much. We're at $33 on that, which is, you know, $10 uh, over spot. Oh yeah, I see. Oh yeah, you guys got the prices right here. That's super handy for people coming in. Yeah, it's certainly no secret. We don't want to keep it a secret. You know, I think an educated customer is, is, a, is a valuable customer. Yeah, no doubt. Well, let me ask you this. So you guys do have a lot of stuff here, but I know that it must have got bought up like crazy just the last week or so. Uh, so if you wanted to order more silver, more gold today, would you have to wait a bit to, for that to come in or? Not terrible, but you okay. might, it might be two, three days, maybe a week to get fulfillment on the order. Okay. Unless it comes in over the counter to us, which every day, thankfully, uh, things do come in. So people are selling right now too. They are, you know, bills come up, life happens. For example, last week we got cleaned out at one point. There was, we ran, completely ran out of bullion. Really? Yeah, and we were completely out of eagles. But, you know, luckily, like Harry was saying, people come in and sell us stuff. So we were lucky enough to buy a monster box. And then, you know, that kind of helped us replenish. And wow. of course we have other sources of um, to get product in. But yeah, it was just last week and week before that was just a little crazy. We have a secret too. Yeah. What's that? His good mother prays for us. <laughs> really? When she oh, yeah. prays for us, good things happen. Things happen. I, I'm being serious. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. What do you guys pay for something like that? If you if you came in today, we would offer you spot plus four dollars per coin. Wow. Everyone who stacked eagles back in the day when we were getting them for a three dollar premium, yeah. you know, we're we're doing really well. And people were making fun of us three, four years ago, saying, Why don't you just get rounds? Because it's a dollar premium. Yep. Why are you paying a three dollar premium for the Eagles? Silver is silver, but right now that's certainly not the case. No, it's definitely not the case, and um, it makes a difference what you bring in. We'll pay a dollar over on just generics, but on the on the Eagles, it's four. Yeah, so I mean, I guess people that were buying uh, silver rounds for a dollar premium, they're still getting that premium back now. Oh sure, it's oh, just we'll get it back. there's just that much demand for it. Yes. Do you feel like? Um, we're gonna enter kind of like a mania phase here. I mean, I know the banks going south is it's kind of a big deal and freaked a lot of people out. Do you feel like people are calming down or we're kind of ramping up? You know, we're in a 24 hour news cycle. The latest story tends to bump last week's concerns off the, off the table. Right. So things have quieted down a little bit. However, you know, another bank failure or threatened failure would drive it right back up again. It's not going to turn into a contagion because they basically bailed out the banks, right? But you can't keep you can't keep taking from the producers and giving to those that aren't producing and expect that to be a long term strategy. If you if you if you punish the producers by higher taxes and reward those who aren't working with subsidies, 
you get more people who are taking and less people who are willing to be taxed. So I think long term, that's a big problem. Yeah. And also when they say, oh, we're not going to uh, have the public pay for these bailouts, it's going to cause inflation when you add, you know, 300 billion to your balance sheet. So we, we are going to pay for it one way or another. Exactly. That's yeah. What I was thinking yeah that's, is. Inflation is a tax. Exactly. It's the worst tax because people don't even realize it. If you buy things, i.e. food, yeah. you're going to be taxed. Yeah. Uh, well, let me ask you this. So you guys do uh, bullion, obviously. You've got a ton of stuff here. And then you've got the 90%. You guys have got uh, ancient coins down here, it looks like, from what I remember. Um, and then obviously you've got all the U.S. Mint numismatics and stuff over on this side. Yes. What do you guys sell the most of? Uh, is it more bullion or do you guys more just do numismatic coins? From a unit standpoint, it's about equal. Okay. But because of gold and its price point, definitely our highest volume would be bullion, really? particularly gold. But we really are a full service coin shop. We, we don't want to just be a bullion dealer, as important as that is, because we respect the hobby. We are collectors ourselves. And I never intended to be just a bullion shop. We, yeah. to, we even have supplies. That whole wall is full of supplies for collectors. Yeah, that's awesome. It's great to be able to buy that stuff locally because, you know, sometimes when you buy it online, you're not exactly sure if it's going to fit your tube or, you know, whatever. And so you can actually try before you buy. Well, you know, that actually, that thinking kind of works here too because you can certainly buy gold online and we have formidable competitors. But... It's so wonderful to have someone stand on th that side of the showcase and have somebody hand it a gold ounce and say, have you ever held an ounce of gold? Right. Because you can't do that online. And once you, once you hold it in your hand, you can't help but fall in love with it. That's so true. Gotta love the Krugerrands. What year is this one? Yeah, I, I definitely like the older ones just because there was no like, you know, U.S. Mint stuff at that time. The, the, the Krugerrand was the first one ounce bullion coin in the world. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, there were 100 Coronas from uh, Austria, which were 0.98, and you had the Mexican 50 peso at 1.2 Troy, but that was the first even number bullion coin. Wow. Still neck and neck with the Eagle as a bestseller worldwide. Has this been the case for a while where you guys are just kind of light on gold? I mean, are people buying a lot of it or? I mean, they'll come in and buy, you know, to the limit, the legal limit of cash. Really? Without having to report it. So we, we keep it at 10,000 or less. And so we have people who will come in and say, what can I get for 10,000? To have it on hand has been a little bit challenging. Definitely. So if someone did want to make a bigger purchase, let's say $25,000, sure. what extra steps would there be, uh, you know, beyond just ha handing you the cash and walking out with the gold? It would take a, a personal check or, and that would have to clear and then we would then source the uh, gold for them or uh, wire transfer the money to us and we can place the order almost immediately. And depending on the, the supply situation, we can usually two to three business days have it in their hands. So if they wanted to pay with cash, you guys wouldn't do it because of the 1099 requirements and stuff? We'll do it, but not more than 10000 in a transaction on a given day. Okay, I see. Yeah. Well, the thing is, we, we could do it, but the thing is, we have to fill out the paperwork for the anti-money laundering and so Right. On. But it really comes down to the... Well, you know, it's not illegal to give me 25000 exactly. in cash. I've just got to report it. And in, in seven years here in the shop, no one has wanted me to do that. Right. Exactly. So people, obviously, they don't want this paper trail going right to the IRS saying, hey, this is what I'm doing with my money. They'd rather just pay cash under 10 grand yes. or do like a check or a wire, like you said. It's a quiet asset and people want to keep it that way. Yeah. yeah. Good, good, good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely in their best interest, right? I think so. You don't want to be screaming from the rooftops, you know, hey, I own gold and silver at my house. <laughs> Um, you guys have some uh, pre-33, which is always good. Again, not as much as we'd like, but that's been moving almost as fast as the bullion. Really? Absolutely. I remember, like, probably five years ago, pre-33 was pretty much all, like, at spot from what I could, except for the higher grade stuff. And now it seems like it's got more of a premium on it, right? It does, uh, particularly the smaller increments. What's the year on that one? 28. 28. 28. 
Yeah, condition too. In 1928, you could buy a man's beautiful suit of clothes, a nice hat, and a great pair of shoes for $20. Wow. And the thing about it is, for what this is worth, you still can. Because for $2,195, you can get a truly excellent suit, a great pair of shoes, and it's really evidence that this held its value. Right. Gold held its value over time. So you may not get rich off stacking gold and silver, but it's a way to preserve wealth. Here's another example, if I may. My favorite one to tell newcomers to the hobby is... I happened to learn to drive in 1972, and gas was about 25 cents a gallon. Oh, wow. And we sell these for $5 each at today's price. And so what I like to share with people is, if it's the right quarter, gas is still a quarter a gallon. Right. It needs to be the silver. Yeah. <laughs> so holding on to this quarter may not have made you rich, but it kept you even, which in an inflationary world, that's not a bad win. Oh, that's definitely a win. I mean, that's one of the reasons I love to stack is just because it's going to retain its value and who knows what's going to happen over the next, you know, 10, 20 years. Nobody knows. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of cool about the gold, though. I mean, can you imagine if there was two people side by side and one of them held on to their gold coins? Obviously, they would have had to hold on to it through 1933. Uh, yes. But if one person held on to their gold and the other person just took, uh, you know, $20 bills, obviously the person with the gold is crushing it. Without a question, there were $20 bills in 1928, and it buys very little now. But that, that coin, which was equivalent to the bill at the time, will buy what it always bought. One of the great things about gold, retains its value. So speaking of $20 bills, you guys do notes, like currency as well? Yes, we do. Let's see what we got over here, because I'm honestly not, I've never really collected it. I don't really know much about older currency, um, but I do know about the um, silver certificates like this one right here. Well, here's an example of Adrian and I accommodating our customers because neither of us have ever been collectors of paper, but people come in that want it. Yeah. If you want it, we'll get it. Sure. So what would be like um, probably your most expensive uh, notes that you guys have probably this North Africa note this was uh, issued in World War II in North Africa with a uh, yellow seal on it to our soldiers and this is also a star note which means that serial number had been used once before mm -hmm. the printing was defective they destroyed those notes reused the serial number and by law they have to put a star next to it so this is a very collectible note that's crazy but so I can still spend this for a dollar today? You could, but it's a $300 plus collectible. <laughs> right, right, right. Here's an interesting note from World War II. It's called a short snorter, and some soldier even wrote that on there, which is unusual. But what they would do is they would pass this around. You know, Howard Cooper would sign it, and then he'd pass it to another guy, and it would go all over the fleet or all over the theater of battle and be signed by different soldiers. And it's a very, uh, it's a very popular subset of the collecting hobby. So is this, if you flip the note over, is this one a silver, silver certificate? certificate? From 1935. Look at that. That is so cool. I wonder where those people are or where their descendants are nowadays, you know what I mean? Yeah, everywhere, hopefully. That's kind of one of the things I like about junk silver too, is you never know who held it in their hand some of the older coins. Like it could have been a famous person, we just don't know. When you get into the ancients, you really could wonder. Okay, we gotta look at the ancients because <laughs> like I said, I don't know much about uh, notes, but I really don't know anything about ancients. Oh, I mean- Where's your guy on ancients? Okay. Well, I, just, I just find it interesting. I, I, for instance, most of these are coins from ancient Rome and this is a denarius. A okay. denarius, it is said in the history books that this was a day's pay for a Roman centurion. And interestingly, think about this. This coin's worth about $160. Okay. Probably a decent day's pay for somebody even today. So yeah. further evidence that this stuff holds its value over time, over millennia. Well, how much silver would you say 
is in a coin like this compared probably, to like a quarter or a dime or? Probably somewhere between a dime and a quarter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but that one wouldn't have been around like when Jesus was alive. This would this have was, came after? This would have been, uh, this one would have been just after from 80, oh, well, actually just before 85 BC. This one would have been quite a bit after 117 AD. If Even if you don't know ancient coins whatsoever, you could put this this coin in particular in someone's hand and mm -hmm. they're going to say, wow, I think that's ancient. I mean, it just screams at you. Yeah, it definitely does. Certainly doesn't look like anything that'd be made today. Exactly. We try to feature world coins as well. I mean, we try to truly, uh, it's a particular love of mine, this showcase of the ancients and the world coins. And so we try to have a selection of world coins for those who, who prefer that. And actually, I find it amazing that majority of coin shops don't really go after this sort of thing. For the, for the money, you can get so much more than, say, in the U.S. series. Um, for instance, we have coins from the 1700s that are a fraction of what a U.S. coin would cost from the 1700s. It's just because, again, you know, there's not a lot of competition. People aren't competing to own this. Well, here's a 1781 taller, which by the way is a precursor to our word dollar from Bavaria, one of the German states. It's $175, not cheap, but something from that era would be a colonial in the United States. You could add a zero to that to own something <laughs> yeah, like or, or a couple zeros, right? No, Depending on condition. Exactly. <laughs> That's so crazy. Now, one thing that I always like to ask coin shop owners. Yeah. What's the craziest coin you've seen come through these doors? I mean, it's got to be something insane, right? Yeah, well, we actually got in a 1915 uh, Pan Pacific. Oh, um, my goodness. The octagonal shape. I mean, that thing was just, uh, you know, we were, it, somebody came in with just like a bag of coins, you know, and they, I took the bag and I'm sitting down appraising them, right? So I, I pull out a couple coins and some nice commemoratives, you know, some gold commemoratives like the McKinley's and, and so on. And then I reach in again and I feel some, wait, wait, wait a second, what's this? I look at it, I'm stuck there for like a minute. You know, I'm like, no. <laughs> it's gotta be fake, like, right? No. You know, so <laughs> I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay. So Harry's, you know, going going at it. He's, you know, appraising the other parts of the collection. And I just lay it on the desk. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Harry's face is just like. <laughs> My brain froze. Really? What well, was a coin worth in excess of $60,000? Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's insane. So, and they had no idea what, what it was? Well, well, the family said, you know, we knew there was something valuable in there because, you know, we, we always try to do right by everybody. And, you know, we wrote the great appraisal and they were mind blown. You know, really? It was valuable, but we didn't have an idea it was that valuable. So wow. it's always nice to deliver those surprises to families and, and people that come in. Well, you know what else? I mean, not quite as dramatic as what Adrian just said, but oftentimes people will bring in bags of foreign coins, like from trips they or the family took over. Oh, sure. And more than once, I've come up and said, you know, there's a gold coin sitting here among the five cent pieces. No. I mean, it's, it's so wonderful, like Adrian said, to be able to tell them that. Because they'll say, well, I know it's not worth anything. And we'll say, no, not, not true. Look at this. You never know what's going to come through the door. And that's, that's part of, for me, the, the joy of being here. We see someone come in with a box under their arm. It's just still exciting. Yeah. It's like a treasure hunt, right? Definitely. It brings out the little the kid. kid exactly. Yeah, that's exactly you know. what I was going to say. It's like you just don't know and gets as excited. You know, it's sweet. Yeah. I, I tell Harry, he, he talk, tells me all the time. I tell him all the time. It's like we feel blessed to be able to do this. You know, it, it's really. For work and. To be, I mean, can I tell you a secret? This beat's working. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we went through most of the shop, but I do want to come back to circle back to the bullion. Let me ask you this. Do people ever bring in the big boys, like the 100 ounce or maybe even the 1,000 ounce silver bars? Very often we get 100 ounce, but not yet. I have not, I've only seen pictures of a 1,000 ounce bar. I've never seen one come through the door. I think mostly those are used in industrial applications, and so yeah. the average person even you know a serious stacker is not going to have it right but we're we would welcome it yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah so if someone were to bring in like a hundred ounce silver bar uh what would you pay would you pay them similar to a round or less because i know typically when they buy them the premium is super low yeah we we tend to buy the hundred ounce bars at spot yeah so not a dollar over per ounce because they're harder to sell not because people don't love them but but the average buyer frankly can't afford them Right. So it's a little harder to sell, a little smaller audience for that. So when people are trying to 
stack silver to preserve their wealth and you know really for insurance for all the reasons we buy it what would be some of the best things for them to pick up because obviously like you mentioned the 100 ounce is going to be a little bit harder to resell it might be the the lowest premium but it's probably not the best thing to buy right well it depends the first thing we ask a new investor or stacker that comes in here is why do you want to buy this what are your what are your goals some people say I fear for the future. I think we're gonna have a barter situation. Mm -hmm. I steer them right to the 90% US because there's small increments that are recognizable, dimes, quarters, halves. Someone might say, no, no, I don't fear the future. I just think it's a good way to balance my investment portfolio. Then I'll draw them back to uh, increments of one ounce, 10 ounce, 100 ounce, because they're not fearful of, of the future. Also, there's an element of, of customers who are so afraid of the future that they think they may have to get up and go quickly. Mm. They have a bag packed, you know, in the basement ready to go. Then I say silver's out because it's not as uh, trans it's not as mobile. It's gold, you can put 10,000 in wealth in your right front pocket. But that much silver would take, you know, a wheelbarrow. <laughs> yeah. Your pants are going to be falling down. Yeah. So we try to ascertain what are your intentions? Why are you doing this? Right. And we'll meet you where you are. We'll help you accomplish whatever your aims are. Yeah. So it's kind of different for every person. Yeah. We just have to first ask a few questions, you know, because people say, what, what should I buy? And I'll say, well, why, why do you want to buy? Well, you know, and sometimes I, people will ask a very reasonable question like, well, if I buy that Philharmonic, will I be able to sell it in the future? And my answer is, you know, kind of humorous, but it's true. I say, well, I bought it. We make a market in it. So you know one place you can go with it. But the truth is, it's all very liquid. Yeah. Well, any other advice for uh, new stackers, Harry? I know you've been doing this quite a while. So there's a lot of people looking to get into the hobby, uh, but also just looking to protect themselves. So what would you say to someone who's new? I mean, should they- I would they... say to not be in a hurry. This stuff's gonna be there. Yeah. Get, get an education. Your channel and others provide a really free and excellent education where you can learn before you buy. You know, the old saying in coin collecting is read the book before you buy the coin. Well, that's a little dated, but watch the video before you buy the, the bullion. You know, get a, get a sense of where, what you want. Oftentimes we have people who rush into this and then a year later are selling what they really aren't collecting because they have focused on something else. So get that focus. Try to learn what it is you want and why, and then start buying. Don't be in a hurry. Yeah. Oh, that's great advice. And if we could ever help with any stacking needs or anything, I mean, this is this is our information here. Um, this is Harry. We know we take phone calls and, and so on. And um, if you want to reach us on our socials, um, we are on Instagram as Beach City Coins. Um, some of your viewers might be familiar with Beach City Coins. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll be happy to take any phone calls or, you know, any questions. We're always happy to help. That's awesome. Well, hey, uh, I got to say the community, um, you guys are doing something great for the community here. Having a coin shop, you guys run a great shop. You've got a massive selection. And so uh, you're, you're doing a great job. And uh, we love it, Harry. We love it. We want to see it go forever. So, <laughs> Well, I, I'm grateful that you, you interviewed us today. And Adrian and I are honored to be on your channel. And we, uh, we wish all your viewers, you know, great success. Awesome. Well, th thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Appreciate yep, it. Absolutely.